Welcome everybody, Mac T back, and of course, what powers your drive? We are here, of course, to go over some of the fun stuff of the Ford Edge in the Lincoln MKX that we're always dealing with. And I want to welcome first all of the new members to the group, as I always do every Sunday. And we had a whole bunch of them again. Holy cow! This group is growing, and again, I cannot stress enough that if you want to get a hold of me or any of the knowledgeable people uh, that are associated across the board uh, with the Ford Edge and Lincoln MKX, you have to join the Mac T Ford Edge Facebook group. And of course, if you have questions or concerns and you're watching the YouTube videos, you got to go to the Ford Edge mac t ford edge facebook group and of course join it that's the only way you're going to do it there are no comments or anything else that are activated on the youtube channel other than the wonderful videos that i make for y'all to take and watch and hopefully learn something and of course uh fix your edge right or your mkx but we have starting from the very bottom here we'll start out with hector jesse nicole nadine Andrew Chico, Economy Fuel, I don't know if that's a name, uh, Tim, David, Sultan, Matthew, Richard, Earl, Dan, Frank, Dana, Jeff, John, Dan, Ron, a lot of Dans again, uh, Janine, Jean, Mike, Zinn, Don, Crystal, Henry, Bojo, Stuart, Ray, Sean, Moto, and Edwina was the latest one to join. We've had a few last minute uh, folks join. We'll catch them up next week. But again, we had another fine large group of people, which is always what happens every week. So that got to tell you one thing, Mac T Ford Edge is a place to go for your Ford Edge information. And speaking of information, we've been really busy. Holy cow, this week has been packed. I posted some stats. And we're, we're basically at a thousand posts a month. Uh, just going crazy on this thing. Everybody's posting something and well over in the tens of thousands of uh, comments and reactions to the group. So we've been very, very busy here. And of course, I thank all the administrators that take part in this uh, effort to make sure that everybody is one, obeying the rules that we all learned in kindergarten, right? Yeah, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? I was just talking about that. Anyway, uh, first things first, uh, y'all need to know, I need to thank the woman in my life that that puts up with me for doing all these uh, Sunday live events while she's upstairs, I'm down here doing this, and uh, allowing me the time, and that is of course my wonderful bride of now 20 years, and her name is, uh, as I call her mom, Osha. Uh, she is of course always watching out to make sure none of us get hurt. But uh, you've seen her in a few videos, and she, of course, is the love of my life. And I appreciate everything she does for me. And, of course, I do my best for her. But that is enough of the warm, mushy, lovey-dovey stuff. Let's move on to the Ford Edge and Lincoln MKX. And uh, we got a few posts. We got an ex what looks like a expedition that was posted up there by uh, Jeremy. He's out there cruising around in the winter weather. Just having a great time getting the doors froze shut and all that other good stuff. And then, of course, what else do we have? We is, uh, somebody's asking, let's see. Ah, seat question again. Todd's asking about a rock clunk in their front driver's seat. Uh, he gets a rocking and a clunking. Well, you know, I don't know what you've been doing in that thing at night there, Todd, but, ooh, you might want to slow her down a little. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> neither here nor there. Uh, we don't want to know. TMI, right? Anyway, you probably got some loose track or bolts in there uh, that may have worn out. So you're going to have to get down in there and become an investigator and uh, start moving that seat around. You can't unbolt it. I think it takes uh, 18 millimeter bolts or something like that to remove the seat. And then a few connectors, you can pull it out and give it a real good inspection by taking it out. 
and I have a video on how to remove the passenger side seat, the driver's side, side seat would be no, no big difference to the passenger. So uh, go ahead and watch that video and that should be able to tell you how to pull that seat out and give her a good old one two and yank her out. Don't forget to pull the seat belt uh, bolt off too if you want to pull it all the way out. But uh, that would be my suggestion on that. Jeff has installed some yellow headlight eyes that change white when you flip the switch back on and off and uh, they look pretty snazzy. I you know, haven't ever seen that before so I guess they got electronics for everything out there, but it does look pretty neat. I wonder what it looks like at night. Maybe you can give us a night shot, Jeff, and so we can see the nighttime vision on this and see what it does. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? Uh, Manoran, Manoran, Manoran. I'm sending you a free membership to, to uh, AA. Uh, I think maybe uh, you and I need to talk, buddy. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll go there for your support. <laughs> he's uh, he's cruising, cruising them aisles pretty hard, isn't he? Uh, he got the whole inventory. Anyway, uh, why did I take and uh, have uh, my screen all off center today? And uh, you know what, folks, I messed up. I already committed to the, to the way I'd set it up. I was trying to experiment and one should never experiment just before one starts a live broadcast so I couldn't figure out how to get it back to center so if it looks like I'm off to the right that is because I am I my camera straight everything straight my other screen I don't know I did something wrong uh, won't be the first time but we'll, we'll get her fixed up next time get it all squared away maybe I'll learn more by then but uh, been been a very busy time. Uh, we got the standard decal peeling off of the Ford, and of course, folks provided uh, proper part numbers to get that repaired. Unfortunately, you're going to have to pull that front bumper cover off to get the darn thing off, because uh, it's attached in the back, and there's no way to really get to it without removing the bumper cover there a bit to get at it. So. Uh, you know, you're just going to have to work on it that way. They do sell some that you can uh, just yank that thing off of there and uh, pretty much strip those screws out and then uh, replace it with sticky tape, 3M tape, and stick it on there. I do not know how well it will stay on, so I would say that that's not a good idea. Sticky tape always wears out, gets wet, gets uh, water on it, and then it falls off, and then you buy a new one, right? So you want to make sure that, uh, of course, you do it the right way. And let's see, we have Ernie. Ernie's got a 210 Edge Limited all-wheel drive, and he just had a new PTU put in it. And uh, his mechanics are saying, gee, you got a head gasket leaking coolant. And uh, I have already previously addressed this, but I will do it here on this group. Uh, Ernie, and I got several people that are also uh, standing by me that, of course, work in the Ford uh, repair industry they're saying very 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 rare for a head gasket failure on a Duratec okay very rare uh, your mechanics are more than likely mistaking a water pump problem with a head gasket okay going through the weep holes they're probably seeing coolant and they're not paying attention to where it's coming from and they apparently do not know enough about that Duratec to know that that water pump has weep holes and that that coolant will will pull up in areas that may look make it look like a head gasket uh, and it may even run like that with water in the oil so uh, Ernie uh, all I can tell you is you get a get a better mechanic get a second opinion I'm more than likely we're probably right in that water pump issue uh, but I will tell you as I've always said before the best car and the best used car you have around is the one you currently own okay uh, I'm making payments on mine but mine's almost paid off and I tell you what once it's paid off if you got to put money into it you stop and think about the car payments for a new one and then maybe you don't have a warranty whatever the case is you're gonna spend a lot more money than fixing the used one unless it is that completely uh, destroyed okay so you got to weigh in what the body condition and all that is, but overall, it, you know, a lot of times it's cheaper. Look at me, I'm, I bought that 
old pickup truck for 500 bucks, I might put two or three thousand dollars into it, rehabbing the under uh, carriage and uh, the uh, suspension and wheels and brakes. But you know what? That is it. I don't have a truck payment. That's I can do this on my own when I want to, and I don't have a truck payment, and I have very low insurance. So the best used truck I got is the one I got sitting outside. So it goes for the edge too. Uh, just just my two cents worth on that one there. Hopefully you uh, can get her fixed, Ernie, and find a good mechanic can help you out in a relatively inexpensive manner. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, lots of things going on. Oh, yes. Remember, I had three years on the Mac T Ford Edge YouTube channel, and I am happy to announce I posted a picture of it. 4,000 subscribers to Mac T Ford Edge on YouTube. Yes. Three years ago, I never believed I'd get 4,000. I was happy with two or three. And now, I have 4,000. So, uh, I think whenever you join and subscribe on Mac T Ford Edge and YouTube, you are helping me on that and growing the channel. The more people that subscribe, the more people that want to subscribe. It's snowballing. It doubled from last year, uh, for the, from 2016 through 2017. Subscribers, minutes, and number of views doubled compared to the previous year of 2016. So if I had a thousand views in 2016, let's say, I had 2,000 views in 2017. Everything doubled for this year. And this year I expect maybe I'll double again. It is becoming a pretty good channel and I try to put out content out there that of course is interesting and useful. So in you know, sometimes I do parts reviews, which I did just recently, as you guys saw my play on words on that. Oh, we got something I'm going to go over here, and of course that is our uh, purge valve, and I got a document I'm going to go through, and of course I will put up, when I go through this document and how to check it and, and cover it, uh, I will put the documents in the YouTube video, and, and I'll put all of them at the end so you all can just go ahead and pause it and read them or whatever but these documents are also in the Mac T Ford Edge files section yes the files section so you can find this document when I reference it later on here I'll tell you where it's at again but it is in the file section I do want to add that we have uh, started a 2015 plus parts uh, document Okay, so you can start finding parts for your 2015 plus Ford Edge, and we're covering all the different trim levels and everything. And we have uh, vast documents on parts for the uh, first gen and the 1.5. Uh, those parts documents all have double links to them to various uh, eBay retailers, Amazon, everybody else. Clickable links, folks. You click on it, you open the document in preview mode, you single click on it. It opens another window and takes you to the part. Now, you can't get any easier than that. The part that you need, you just cross check and verify that it is exactly the part you need, just in case you did something wrong. And of course, once you verify it, boom, Bob's your uncle. You got the, you got the part ready to be shipped to you and repair your edge. Uh, this, this almost takes going out to the dealer right out of the equation by joining this group because you got it ready 24 7 you don't have to wait till the dealer opens you can look the part up on the Mac T Ford Edge Facebook group on the document and it doesn't get any easier than that and the cost is so great uh, you know I, I just ask people how much they paid for it and they will tell you how valuable it is <laughs> it does take some work folks and you're getting it for free okay that's all I can tell you you're getting it for free so uh, you know it, it doesn't get any better than that we're helping you and we're providing information for you uh, let's see Anthony 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 what do we got going on here uh, he says what kind of uh, brake pads would he suggest for the uh, front and the rear uh, ones that have friction and make you stop Oh, you wanted more information than that, Anthony? Uh, Anthony, I always say if you're looking for just brake pads, then you got to take into account what kind of rotors you got. 
You don't want to slap ceramics on used rotors. You'll chew those rotors to bits and uh, you'll end up uh, buying new brake pads and new rotors. So uh, if you're not sure, stick with your, uh, your semi-metallic organic type rotors uh, and all that good stuff that you'll do and you can find them online virtually anywhere and uh, you know go to AutoZone, go to Amazon, whatever you know whatever you want to go buy the Motocraft pad, pads from from Ford uh, lots of dealers there, Tasca Parts comes to mind you can buy a lot of parts there but uh, you know if you're going through pads that fast uh, unless uh, your rotors you know how old are they it, a lot of times you know no matter what I would change the rotor. There's been cases where I haven't because the rotor was good, but there's been cases where you just got to look at it and say, well, I need a new rotor and pads. Uh, it's always better to default to that than, than try to make something work. So, uh, Anthony, hopefully I answered that question. I'm sure more get in there and go to the parts list in the file section and you'll find brake pads there, buddy. And you'll be able to, of course, get that fixed up. Carrie Jones, you washing your edge, getting all that nasty, salty stuff off of it. And just in time for the snowstorm, no doubt. Uh, let's see, everybody's talking about the pearl white color needing to be hand washed. Holy cow. If I had a pearl white, you know what I'd do? I'd run it through the sandpaper machine over at the local car wash and call it a day. Uh, yeah, you guys say, my gosh, he is horrible with the paint. And yes, folks, I am horrible with the paint. I, I, I'm just not a car wash guy. I'm not a detailer and uh, my cars are essentially tools. Uh, that's just how I have to live. Uh, if I worried about the airy detail on them, I would drive myself completely bonkers. Uh, you know, I learned a long time that, you know, ago that once I bought a, bought a car, it was a used car and I take care of it, but it is a used car. So. Uh, definitely not an investment in my mind. Uh, certain cars are investments, like if you go to Barrett Jackson, that's probably an investment. But if you go to the Ford dealer and buy a used Ford Edge, that's not an investment, folks. Uh, that's just not the way it works. Uh, <laughs> there's a big difference. Anyway, what else do we have going on here? Some advice to remove and reseal the headlights. Uh, lots of stuff going on with these headlights, getting water in them, and a lot of good advice. Uh, heat that headlight up, I guess, to about 200 or so degrees in the oven. If you want to look at it, I forget what they said they're heating them up to. See if I can find it real quick. Uh, it ain't very hot, that's for sure. Uh, let's see, put it on a piece of cardboard in the oven for seven minutes. Preheat the oven, make sure it's already hot, and uh, to 235 degrees for seven minutes. You're not putting this in long, folks, and then you want to use something really sharp to clean out all the seals and get all the nasty little stuff out of there and then you're going to put a silicone sealant into those seals and reseal them yes uh, some suggestions you know those little those little silica packets that you get some suggested pushing one of those inside the headlight to let it sit down at the bottom to absorb moisture and of course uh, if it is really wet in there taking it out putting a hair dryer into the into the opening and of course uh, letting it uh, as they say run to dry it out and then reseal it so uh, there are a lot of different techniques and of course get with the group to figure that out but uh, for those of you got leaky headlights uh, I guess the other alternative is take all the wiring out and if you don't know where the leaks are uh, <laughs> it's simple folks if you want to know where your boat leaks you just simply put it in the water right well, the opposite is this case. If you don't know where it's leaking, you simply fill the fill it up with water and and see where it leaks. Is where the water's coming out? That's where it's leaking, right? So, uh, pretty simple concept. Be careful all the wiring and electronics and everything. Get them all unplugged and disconnected, and nothing connected to you know cause problems there. Uh, pretty simple solution, I guess, in the long run. Uh, let's see what else we got. Oh, uh, yeah, the car wash thing everybody is going nuts on. Yes, I'm sorry. Everybody's going crazy on the car wash thing. Uh, just throwing egg beaters on it, folks. I don't know what to say. Uh, I do know that some people are very susceptible to the care of the vehicle. And I can, I can, I can sympathize with your feelings on it. 
and uh, understand it is just not something that I put a priority on. So, uh, but hey, I gotta admit, some of you got really sparkly edges, and I'm envious of it. It's just I cannot afford to do that with my vehicle, and I just can't. Uh, so, Lou gets rode hard and put away wet. That's all there is to it. Let's see. Yes, we have some interesting car parts companies with various names that I will not pronounce here. Uh, Y'all see it there. I, I, it is a true company, I, and I, for the life of me, I do not know why they came up with this other than to garner attention. That, that is the only reason they came up with that name was to gain attention through the Internet. The Internet is, a, is fair game for getting yourself noticed, and they named this company purposefully this name to gain attention to their product. That's what they did. Okay, so don't think of it anything else. That's all they did. But anyway, what else could we do here? I only got about 20 minutes into it. I want to move on to a few other things. Uh, what else did I have on here? Uh, let's see. Uh, I have oil series that I've started. Now, with this oil series, uh, I have tested five, five uh, virgin oil samples. I have about another dozen coming that we'll be testing, and it will not be, uh, and it will be high-end, low-end, and mid-grade type synthetic oils. Okay, so we're going to have a lot of samples there, but we are also running uh, virgin test samples on PTU fluids, folks. Yes, PTU fluids are going to be tested for virgin samples to see what kind of additives they got in here. And I will explain that this oil series, I hope you all have patience with me on this, this oil series is really designed to help you all using the Duratec engine to identify uh, what, it, what we're really looking for is what are the additive packages to the virgin oil. And this way you can make an educated decision based on what additive you want in your oil, okay? And I did a used sample uh, testing also of my last one, but all these virgin samples will be compared two against two. So I'll pick two oils, compare them to each other, have a video out on it like I did on the Motorcraft in the uh, Kendall oil. Did that, I'll do it, and there'll be a series of these that are gonna be coming out. And I will also state that I do have the Royal Purple Virgin and used Sample. One of our members did a test on this Royal Purple after they ran it about 10,000 miles. So we're gonna compare the before and the after, okay? So we're gonna have the Virgin Sample here and we're gonna have the used Sample here and we're gonna put them together and we're gonna see what did we come up with as far as the after the use, right? We've never seen the virgin before and, and then the after testing. So this will be something new also for all of you as far as the oils. But you're going to see an oil thing. And yes, I will still be doing repairs and everything else. So I'm going to try to slide these uh, oil sample things in as I can throughout the upcoming weeks. And this is a first on YouTube. You don't see too many videos out there talking about and showing actual virgin sample test results with the additive packages in there. You don't see it. Uh, you can look. I've looked. Everybody talks about oil. They all talk about, oh, we got additives, but nobody has actually tested and said, this is the additive package in this oil. This uh, is the additive in it. This is the amount that's in there. And, uh, you know, my conglomeration on my motor oil cocktail was exactly that, folks. Uh, I got the report back from Blackstone. I'll do a video on that thing. They, they said it was quite a unique mix. And I tell you what, this thing had more of every additive in it than any oil you could, you, know, you could buy. By mixing all six of these together, I had high amounts of all different types of additives combined in one oil. One oil, okay? By mixing all six of them. You could not come up with this mix at all by buying one single oil. You couldn't do it. So very unique mix and of course very unique results on it. But I will tell you that, hey, 
they said I could have drove a lot further on it. That ought to tell you something. Anyway, what else are we going to be talking about here? I did that royal purple uh, comparison. I'm going to do a video on, of course. Uh, that will be the video I do. And I got something else that I did. In case all of you have not seen. Yes, 18 inch chrome clad caps. OEM style. Yes, these are exactly what is on my wife's edge. All I got to do is peel off the old ones and I can pee, put these on. These are exact Ford replacements. So I got them for like 130 or 40 bucks or something like that for four. They want at a minimum brand new 300 and something for a whole new wheel of the chrome clad. And I just proved you can get these things online if you look hard enough. And I got a set of four. And when I put them up for everybody, they're already sold out. That ought to tell you something. And I can't find the sports or anything like that. I only found the ones that were on my wife's limited. But I will be doing a video. And, of course, uh, putting this one on. And uh, I may have to do a little video magic on it. But quite frankly, I'm not going to put the chrome clads back on my wife's edge. I'm going to use this one as a prop. I'll do the video and then I'll probably yank it off right away because I'm not going to keep them on my wife's edge. I will probably get the tires painted uh, the same way I did uh, Lou. Okay, so I may put these chrome clads back up for sale. Yes, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, you know. You know, shipping and everything else. I'll see what we got. But those chrome clads are definitely cheaper than buying the whole wheel. So uh, we'll see what we do. Uh, I got to see how the how the movie magic works in putting them on and taking them back off right away. Uh, it'll it'll I ain't gonna let it set log because I don't want it to hear. But I may do it enough to actually say this is how it fits, and then pull it back off and clean it up and call it a day. And then I, then I got one wheel off already. That's my, my goal behind it. So we'll go ahead and do that and then, of course, uh, carry on. But that's my next video along my valve cover. Uh, quite frankly, folks, if I had more time, I wish I could find it. Uh, I've seemed to have lost time. So it gets to be pretty uh, busy doing things. But I am getting there. I'm slowly forging ahead trying to keep you all happy with the videos and trying to keep the uh, rest of everything else going as well as possible. Uh, let's see, what do we got going on? Next thing we have, let's see, number one reason that I wanted to start doing this here uh, uh, whole video and everything else is uh, the number of miles I put on my edge. So. Let's hold that thought for a second. Anyway, now, Ford Edge, the reason I'm here and the way that I learned how to take and work on my edge. I bought that 2008 back in 2010 of December. Okay, pros and cons on the Ford Edge, first generation versus 1.5. I will tell you, uh, I loved my 2008. I abused my 2008. I drove that thing into the dirt and did not do maintenance on it. I, uh, I drove it literally months with the wheel bearings growling. I went through a total number of e uh, wheel bearings on that 2008 Ford Edge uh, of like six wheel bearings. Okay? And I don't want to get into the whole point of what I replaced and everything else, but I did a lot of work, power steering, uh, hose. but Here's some of the weaknesses I've seen and some of the strengths. One is pretty strong as far as just being ready to go all the time. Never really left me anywhere. Never stranded me. Always started. But the drive shaft on the driver's side, uh, the drive se the seal, transmission seal, uh, leaked. It always leaked. It leaked the entire time I owned it. Uh, straight from the factory, no less. And there's a problem back then, and there's a TSB on it. But uh, the power steering gear, and they call it a, the steering gear, 
and the steering gear is aka the rack okay steering rack and uh, that started going and I would tell you by the time I traded it in I was looking at dropping the entire uh, subframe to get that rack out of there to replace it because it was leaking so bad I could hardly stay up with it okay uh, I was looking at that expense to do it and uh, it had the original alternator did and it also had uh, original parts other than uh, one O2 sensor went out and just fixed that but that thing went through about I think uh, one two three four four LCA's I think I went through uh, on that edge lower control arms I uh, went through a lot of those. I was getting ready to replace another one. Um, you know, shocks and struts, strut bearings, went through those. Ate them, ate them up, okay? Horrendous suspension. Uh, LCAs went through those like mad. Uh, granted, I wasn't replaced with OEM Motorcraft LCAs. I was using Moogs, and I think maybe that might have been part of it, but I think maybe it might have been part of just the way the, that first gen edge was. Uh, but I was burning through those LCAs at a tune of about 60,000 miles. Uh, struts, I was burning through struts right and left too, along with wheel bearings. So the suspension on the first gen was, was really a problematic thing for me. Uh, rear suspension, shocks, that's it. Didn't do anything else with the control arms or anything in the back, uh, the trailing arms as they say, or anything like that. It was not an all-wheel drive, it was front-wheel drive. So I didn't have to deal with the PTU. That pro I probably would have had a garage full of those things by the time I got done with that thing. Uh, but I did not uh, take care of it. Uh, when I did a spark plug change on it, uh, I had 150,000 miles on the spark plugs, folks. Uh, I drove that thing until an oxygen sensor failed. Uh, yeah, I learned. I learned a lot. And, of course, you guys say, well, you're so good on your maintenance. Why did you do this? Well... Uh, back when I was driving it, folks, uh, I will admit I did not have money. I was working at a job that did not pay well, and I was running my feet off trying to keep going, and I didn't have the money to do the maintenance, so I stretched everything, and that was my fault, 100%. I admit it, and uh, we all do it, and that's my whole point, is I have since uh, righted my ways, and discovered that maintenance <laughs> does make things cost less, okay? It might not seem like it, but it does. So anyway, I abused that Ford Edge, and uh, that Orange Crush was just completely going. And I drove that Orange Crush to 285,000 miles, and I drove it far enough to get it to the moon and started my round trip back. Now, uh on that same token then I got rid of it okay I knew I needed a new steering gear I knew the transmission torque mount was nothing more than a than two than a piece of metal with with nothing in between it, it had no rubber left in it uh, the engine was slopping around it was the original engine in transmission mount okay uh, yeah she was hurting she was hurting big time as far as uh, those aspects on it and uh, coolant everything I did a decent job on that it was not meticulous like I am now but uh, it was alright power steering eh. I waited till the power steering was broken then I changed it after 250,000 miles or something and you know then they said well do you want us to flush this is not all drained out they added more in and off I went okay so I abused my power steering in that aspect and that probably caused me to have some other issues too that was some seriously old stuff but uh, what did I learn I learned everything on that 2008 I learned that uh, if I wanted to keep that edge running I needed to start from scratch so I traded it in yes I had ran that thing into the dirt and it was time to upgrade and I wanted hands-free and a few technology things so I bought uh, blueberry yes I bought blueberry blueberry was supposed to be my car and uh, <laughs> it didn't turn out that way did it anyway my wife owned and drove Lulu Bell and uh, she got Lulu Bell 
she brought it up to the dealership to pick me up and uh, she saw that I was buying blueberry and she liked blueberry so much that she threw me the keys to Lou and she jumped into blueberry and took off went back home left me standing there with Lou now that's how I got Lou I you know the the decision was made uh, I'm not quite sure where in the conversation I was at when it happened but apparently she was happy thus I was extremely happy <laughs> anyway uh, I don't know if it works for you guys that way that's how it worked for me anyway uh, you know when I do get my next Ford Edge ST, I mean Sport, did I say ST? Nah, I, I would never buy a new ST, folks. The, just forget I said that. Shh. Don't say anything. Don't, uh, it never happened. You don't hear this. Anyway, um, I then got Lou. I started driving Lou. Uh, and of course, I learned. First thing first, change all those fluids, right? I, and Lou had some uh, recall issues done to her. Uh, new APIM, had new power steering hoses, certain things done to it. But then the alternator failed, got that fixed. And I am still on the original LCAs at 222,000 miles. I am still on the original OEM front wheel bearings. And I have replaced the shocks and strut mounts once. Uh, coming up on a second time. I am on the second set. Uh, well, no. The first set of sh rear shocks uh, failed, and then I put another set on. So I'm on the third set of rear shocks because the rear shocks leaked. Uh, those were the KYBs, but they're at 100,000 miles, so you can't argue. Uh, so the, uh, the shocks are brand new, third set, and I'm still working on the struts, and the struts replaced later, but they're coming up real soon. And I'm thinking I will have to replace the LCAs because of the ball joints eventually. But the motor mounts are going to be next on here. And, of course, I'm going to replace the transmission mount. Hopefully, if my connection can help me, I will replace the transmission torque mount with an aftermarket performance mount, folks. You all that own the Sport and might want to have a little bit stiffer uh, transmission torque mount, if I could pull this off, maybe we'll get a group buy or at least get some sort of larger buy together to help cost with it. Uh, they will not be cheap, though. I'm going to tell you that straight up. Okay, they're not going to be your standard $39.95. So, uh, but hey, that's what I'm willing to do. But anyway, uh, in driving to the moon and back, I have learned, and of course, taking care of my return rocket. Okay, I want to make sure I land back on the world safe with Lou, and I've been keeping up with the maintenance. I will tell you, uh, hands down, the 1.5 generation, if you own a first generation Edge and don't want to buy a new second gen or don't want to pay the price for a second gen Edge, the 1.5 is, of course, a different critter. Same platform, but the suspension is better. Uh, the components for the wheel bearings, everything is better, okay, even the technology. There may be some that complain about the My Ford Touch and all this stuff. Trust me, I've been through it all. I know what the first gen is, and I know what the 1.5 is, and I will tell you right now, the 1.5 is the sweet spot, okay? They fixed everything from the first gen, and they were fixing it all the way through till they got to the 1.5, and then they improved it. Now, there are some places where they made mistakes trying to change things around a bit, but the 1.5 is the bestest of both worlds, as they say. Okay, you ain't got the price of the second gen, and you don't have the, the, the problems of the first. Uh, so, it is that sweet spot, and I will tell you that I am enjoying my ride with Lou. I am right now have less maintenance problems suspension, everything else on this 1.5 at this point in my drive on it at 222,000 miles than I did on the first gen, the Orange Crush. I was dumping cash into the Orange Crush. Granted, it is because of lack of maintenance, but still there were weaknesses that were involved. Okay, so uh, that being said, in my whole drive to the moon and back, okay, in the number of miles that I've driven the edges, 
I can attest that the 1.5 is a great vehicle as far as the generation of Ford Edge compared to the first gen. I, I, my, I always have a special heart for the first gen, but the 1.5 is there. The second gen, I haven't driven yet, and it may be a totally different story for me when I get into that, or the 2.5 version may be where I end up being. I don't know. I'm not going to buy another Ford Edge, but I can guarantee you, whatever it is, I will surprise the heck out of all of you when it does happen. Uh, it, I'm going to make a big step and something that I generally don't do, but I'm going to make a big step. It ain't happening right away. Got to make sure everything is, falls into, into the right scope to fit, but I will tell you, it won't be me driving. It'll be my wife, but I'll still have one. And uh, I will continue driving a 1.5 edge, uh, generation edge more than likely. I don't know. Uh, we'll see what happens there. But I will have a second gen or newer uh, edge in my future if anything I say about it. But uh, again, if you have questions on it and uh, don't quite understand what I'm saying here, all I'm going to say is if you can swing it, a 1.5 gen is definitely within purchase price of people. And if you do it right, you will find one. But when you do buy one, make sure you check all the fluids and then plan to do all the work on it to set it off to the even scale, just like I do. Uh, but, you know, overall, I'm going to say the ride back is going to be far more comfortable and easier back from the moon in my 1.5 than it was on the way to the moon. Okay? If that makes any sense at all. It's, a, it's all theory, theory for you all, folks. Hypotheticals, yes. So, but the whole point is, is yes, I do enjoy the 1.5 much more than the first gen. And uh, that, that's just the fact of it. So, uh, that is my point I wanted to make on, on everything else. And, uh, of course, uh, that Generation Edge is always going to be sweet in my heart. And I will tell you all that I only have one white sticker, two black stickers, and I have five of the red stickers left. Uh, of course, uh, if you want to get them, get them while they're remaining, okay? Uh, and then, of course, I do have the Band of One stickers, so if you want a Band of One sticker, by all means, get a hold of me. PayPal, that's how you do it. Donate your money for the Band of One stickers at four bucks. And, of course, the stickers for MAC-T, all of them except for the black are 5 bucks, and the black are 7 50 because they're a special order color. And, of course, uh, get a hold of me on in Facebook and, of course, pay via PayPal. Give me the color stickers you want and how many, and we'll get them in the mail to you. Just mailed off our 2000th member a sticker. I think her name was Crystal. And, uh, of course... Uh, we, I think it was. I can't remember. Holy cow. I know I wrote it down somewhere. Let me see what it was. Let me see. Yes. Crystal Hagen. Okay. That was the 2000th uh, member to Mac T Ford Edge. And she's from Canada. Yay. So anyway, she's got her stickers that I offered her for joining for being the 2000th member and they are in the mail already on the way so uh, again this is Mac T Ford Edge and of course I'm gonna go back here and refresh and see if there's questions there's always questions yes there's always comments where are you all at what are you saying savage garden to the moon and back Mano's adding us adding a, all sorts of stuff uh, first gen quit the kidding uh, Mano's, uh, beating down Mano's first gen. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's, they're making fun of stuff. <laughs> anyway, uh, all sorts of things going on and, uh, comments going here and there. So I don't see anything, uh, that's going too crazy on the statements. I try to always cover them, and let's see, 
what was the first year of the 1.5 Gen Edge? This is from Jason. Jason, it was 2011 through 2014 was the 1.5 generation edge. The first gen was 2007 through 2010. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question, Jason. And let's see. That is pretty much it, folks. I don't see anybody else here having any questions, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off. And again, what powers your drive, right? I got new music from the band of one. We are changing it over for this year, so I will have the new music that you will always hear in this uh, Facebook group and, of course, on my videos. So stand by for the new stuff. You've already heard it once. And then, of course, uh, as with all things, join up and subscribe to YouTube and Facebook. Make sure you, of course, uh, like all the videos and of course Facebook you join up and ask questions and join and have a great time and my feet hit the floor today and I'm having a great day and I want you to have a great day too with that being said the band of ones got their music and Mercy Girl is going to do some one liners and then I may toss a little bit of uh, weird footage at the end of whatever I happen to find and of course entertain you all at the very end but this is Mac T y'all have a great day and I'm signing off. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos. Remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Go production.